All right, so let's do part two of the song folder tour. Part one involved the top shelf A-list material on the right. I'm sorry, yeah, on the right. And today we're going to do the left side. Uh, none of it's in any kind of an order. So the right side is um, hot list material, meaning stuff that if you need to rehearse a band, uh, it'll be on the right. And you don't have to, you'll have to flip through it, but you only have to flip through half of it to find a song for a rehearsal. Left side is stuff that uh, has either been recorded or is obsolete, or both. And it starts off with a song uh, that's, uh, that I never did learn, uh, obviously a photocopy out of a hymnal called God Will Make a Way. And it's on the top so that every time I open my folder, I'm reminded that God will make a way. And uh, it's something to, to need that usually needs to be reminded. If you don't need to be reminded of that, uh, good for you. This is all, that's just scraps. Uh, stuff that actually hasn't been used yet, which is song scraps that are still sweaty from when I've carried it around with me on the road. True Love is a Trip chord chart for a bass player. <laughs> Once you've written it down, I, 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 I don't like to re re rewrite things. Oh, it's on the back of a... Uh, flyer for a show in Bisbee, uh, which is, I think, my last show in Arizona, perhaps. That was a interesting night, actually. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was one of the coolest places. I did mention on the other video, I think, that other than the Double Down, this place might actually be the only place other than the Double Down that really really actually in the English speaking world that really kind of they they were they treated you well that girl there whoever she I forget her name she was cool uh, her and the double down saloon in Las Vegas are the only places in the English speaking world that ever um, that I can say that I say would were didn't have an attitude this is all blank that's a long story I, I, the, I, the, the other video is an hour long, and I, and I, and I, and I skipped so many stories. I mean, if I could, you know, it, it, the, the video would be six hours long. Um, this is all blank material for future set lists. There's a lot of blank, some blank pages here for any songs that I write. Uh, this happens to be an old Alcoholic Clown Records Presents poster. Uh, back when Soundheart Records was Alcoholic Clown Records. And it was me and a buddy of mine from L.A. who moved to Austin, actually. Uh, we were going to have a show together at the parlor. Which, uh, actually, I think is out of business now. has been for a while. Punk Rock Pizza Place on North Loop in Austin. That was a cool place. Uh, in fact, you can see why this is a... That's <laughs> obviously a uh, mistake there. So that flyer poster was no good. Same thing. Blank paper for future lyric writing when you need something to write it on. Set list for live shows. It's got even uh, some footprints on it or uh, stage dirt. And this is any, any you know, first three or four songs generally are in order. After that, it's just kind of you can glance at it and say, you know, we'll play this one next. Uh, we do, don't really have a set list. There isn't, uh, so it's... It's uh, um, just kind of come with me. This is a list of unrecorded material, all of which is actually still unrecorded. I'll leave it mysterious in case I record some of it later. This is the actual set list of all the songs. Um, pretty much. I don't know if it's all of them or not. But. Uh, so, this is all the songs, you know, organized in an aesthetically pleasing manner. And then once the printout stops, uh, handwritten. And it goes all the way up to Morning Star, which is a song uh, that hasn't been uh, recorded yet. Most of these songs, the handwritten songs, most of them have not been recorded yet. So this is a set list of... Uh, of the material to date, all the songs. 
uh, going back to whatever, the 90s, I guess. Several pages of that. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> you can see, indeed, where it goes. Let's just go through it. You get the point. Just that's, that's a set list. <laughs> it's also a Rorschach test. And if you don't see a wine glass or a vase or a candlestick, you're out of your mind. <laughs> That's the test. This was always page one, which is probably why it's last. I don't know. It's a beautiful place. It was always the top shelf first first song. It was for years and kind of is in the still way. That's a, a contract from these guys in Austin. Come out ye black and tans, the old Irish tune. Um, those could probably be more cover songs on this side. I never I learned it. And this is, I guess, three different keys to choose from. I forget. I don't remember. Uh, just in case people wanted to play it. I never did. She's No Good, off the Vampire Cats record. Uh, just a printout from the library. Been stained. Uh, bled through. I just uploaded the Vampire Cats album, actually. It's the only, well, one of the few albums that is unrepresented in any way. The Best Christmas Yet. This song was never recorded. Uh, written on Christmas Eve of 06 in Austin. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, I remember this. I was living in a shack in Austin with my buddy Bill. And uh, it was just us and his brother. And we went walking through the cemetery. And uh, they, were, they had some beer. I, I didn't drink at that time. That was one of my sober stages. And I, we just, I spent the first two months in that place doing nothing but uh, drinking coffee and writing songs. I just I had so much backlogged vibe to write. I wrote a lot back in, back at that time. Uh, that was the end of 06, so that was my first Christmas in Austin. I never got around to recording that song. Uh, it's kind of funny. You know, it's supposed to be funny. Uh... There's Santa Clauses everywhere, and I couldn't care less. The post office is closed again, but I ain't depressed. You know, <laughs> another MIG a MGTOW Christmas before MGTOW was MGTOW. The Princess of No Return, which has changed its title a couple times, to the point that it went back to being the Princess of No Return from 01 to 06. This was written, apparently. Uh... Including a song, there's here is a verse that was actually used for another song that ended up on Holy Smokes. Uh, I want to take you away to that imaginary world behind the bushes. Yeah, that's not creepy. <laughs> of course it's creepy. That's off the new sun song off of Holy Smokes, but this is the Princess of No Return. That's on uh, Slow Burning Fun, Volume 2. The Reluctant Kite. I remember writing this in the back of a van in uh, Clarkdale, I want to say. Yeah, Clarkdale. I, I was, uh, the beginning, it was February of 2014, so that would have been the beginning of my time in the Verde Valley. And uh, I remember writing this uh, at the uh, train station there in Clarkdale. That was actually a good place to camp. If you, it was kind of, it was a downside to it, I don't remember, but it was good also. It was kind of a huge parking lot that was calm and kind of relatively pleasant and you know I've done a lot of writing in vehicles so uh, I just wrote this and of course it's handwritten because you don't have any access to anything else um, in the van but that's off of uh, I don't know the reluctant kite Satan at the movies that's a good song actually I really like that song some good lyrics and fun writing that May of 08 April May of 08 on Badger Springs Road in Arizona that would have been the Airstream you Can't Stop Me, off of Vampire Cats. Nothing uh, particularly, nothing there in terms of the story doesn't tell you anything. Or the lyrics don't tell you anything. The printout doesn't tell you anything. A Little Love, that's uh, an undated song. I have no idea when I wrote this. Oh, wait, there's two pages, no wonder. Okay, yeah, May of 07, yeah, that makes sense. 
the chord changes in the middle part to kind of remind you so you don't forget. You have to write it all down. I mean, probably. Uh, and then once it's recorded, you can forget about it. And I and I had to, I did a lot of backlog recording uh, that I was able to finally finish that stuff up. And I could learn them again, but a lot of the songs I have kind of forgotten, which is a great relief. I can free up that brain space for other things. That's a good song off Fabulous Dream. Someone to Taste, a hilarious, ridiculous song off of uh, Slow Burning Fun, Volume 1. It's... Uh, that's on, I want to say, uh, it's one of the dark, I think it's the Dark Secret Places uh, Greatest Hits record, I think. I just made those last few Greatest Hits albums up at the last minute. Someone to taste. Not much story there. This one apparently is a story. And in fact, yeah, wow, 898. So here's a sheet from 98. This is a song called Down in the Valley, which ended up on the uh, Stupid Old Heart record, I think. Or... Yeah, Stupid Old Heart. That's a good song. My friend in England uh, providing background vocals, uh, written in August of 1998, it says. And you can see that the paper does kind of uh, back up the story. It's uh, of it being 20, 22 years old at this point. It's got mold stains <laughs> and chord changes. And in fact, this whole middle section is glued on. It's another piece of paper that's in fact glued on. And it's got the chord, and then the dot is the note for the melody, so you can get the chords and then kind of an idea where the melody goes by looking at the dot without having to actually write the music down. Uh, I can read music, but I don't. I, I don't need to. It's not, it's not. And then it gives you a full interlude. Uh, apparently I wanted a violin with this. It's, uh, yeah. This was, uh, this was an interesting, it's a great song. But apparently, it, it, uh, so from 1998 to 2013, that's how long it takes to really realize it happens on a regular basis, at least for me, 15 years will go by. No One Seems to Hear is a cool, interesting story also. Um, I re this was such a good song. The music, is, and I think it's on the Holy Smokes album, and the lyrics are used for the Invisible Church off of Fabulous Dream. And if you listen to No One Seems to Hear uh, off of Holy Smokes and Fabulous Dreams, uh, The Invisible Church, that's the same lyrics. And it's because I was just sitting around one day recording in pl and I just picked up these lyrics and sang, uh, sang randomly, just sang them, recorded it, and then I realized it was actually really cool when I put some music and some horn uh, string samples, I mean, under under it for uh, for the Fabulous Dream record, and that's a real highlight of that album, actually. But it's it's actually from, the lyrics are actually from uh, this song called No One Seems to Hear. Uh, you can see I wrote the, I had a title out, title ideas for it. And I wrote this in April and May of 09, which is when we were camped uh, in front of those, uh, these guys we used to know in Austin. We were living in our trans van outside of their house. And um, they had their band room, and I was, and I had just come up with the riff. And <laughs> as is always the case, uh, I was, you play it into the ground. You play it until it, it's like, it, it, it has to take you, it's, it, 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 you, you don't just like, oh, that's a cool idea, and then drop it and write it down and move along. I mean, I kind of, in, I, I, I jump into it, and it becomes kind of until I really absorb it or whatever. And I was just playing this, this, this riff. If you listen to the No One, no one Seems to Hear track off of uh, uh, Holy Smokes, you'll hear the riff. Uh, but it doesn't do justice to that first lunatic time when I actually came up with the tune and uh, couldn't stop playing it, and, and, you know, and I drove the people crazy. The, uh, somebody's girlfriend, uh, usually, it's usually somebody's girlfriend, uh, was like, when are you going to stop playing that song, you know, and I'm like, you know, it, that's one of the, it's just, uh, when are you going to start paying for this song and help me get my own place? I'm sick of living on your, in your parking lot. Baby Don't Cry, that's a, that was one of those great songs that kind of got forgotten. I think it ended up in the Blinded by Faggots record. Um, yeah, that's kind of a lost song. It's too bad.
I should make a video out of that just to just to get the song out of uh, hiding. A lot of those songs ended up on other greatest hits records, so that album's kind of uh, the good. There's some pretty bad recordings on there. All the good stuff has been salvaged. Stupid Old Heart, another old song from God knows when. It looks like it's 05. You wouldn't know by looking at the lyrics, though. They've obviously been edited into submission. Um, in fact, uh, you can see here, if you can read it, Stupid Old Heart, it starts off with the original idea was to uh, have the first lines from Blackbird. The imagination betrays the mind by sabotaging it into becoming a heart. Does that make us dangerous? Does it make us something we aren't? And uh, I had, I've had that line, that, that uh, lyric, for well over 20 years. But it didn't actually get used until Blackbird uh, from uh, Rural Mortis. And uh, so, but it, I was thinking about using it for Stupid Old Heart, apparently. You get the idea. Lots of scratch outs, lots of... Lots of editing, lots of moving around. Greaser Boy, great song off of uh, Broken Bird, I think. Broken Bird is one of those song albums that uh, I like a lot. Um, kind of a space record. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of a trippy, underwater, psychedelic Las Vegas album, kind of. Greaser Boy is uh, about getting married in Vegas. My second wife we went to Vegas and uh, got married. I don't recommend it, but uh, it was a beautiful night. Beautiful. One of the best nights of my life. Uh, Angry Dogs on Fire, another love song. You know it's a love song when it's called Angry Dogs on Fire. Um, great song off the of Vampire Cats record. Never got really to be used. This song is really funny. Uh, Bitch Crackers. This never get anywhere either. Um, this was supposed to be the white trash response to Dr. Dre's song of uh, Chronic 2000, the Bitch Niggas tune. And uh, this is Bitch Crackers. And so it starts off, salutations, fellow male canines, you know, uh, yo dog. <laughs> Actually, I think that first line might have been written by my buddy F., I think he said that on a regular basis, and then I was living at his apartment at the time in uh, L.A., and I uh, just used it as a beginning line for the song. I think that might actually might be from my buddy F. in L.A. He just, salutations, fellow male canines. Yo, dog. <laughs> anyway, it's a hilarious song with some great ridiculous lyrics. She was gone when I awoken. My day learn heart is broken. Stuff like that. Uh, maybe that'll be used at some point for some, I mean, it won't. But you never know. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not going to force feed it, but Sweet Little Liar, uh, just another song, whatever, that's off. That's a good one off of uh, Is It For Real, February 2014, beginning of the, of the Arizona years. I want to try to blow through some of these because I... If I told a story for every one, the battery would die, and it would be two hours long. Uh, if I Ever Leave This World Alive, Flogging Molly song, never learned it, thought about it, never did it. Girls, what's your trip? I always was, I was really happy when this song made it onto, uh, and it's on the back of some, some torn up would-be flyer from the uh, early Austin days. I uh, wrote this, uh, typed it out. Uh, in Austin. That's a great track. That's one of those lucky tracks that the track is way beyond what you would expect from when you wrote the song. Tragic Neurons, typed uh, in the back of uh, some Neon Signs scraps. Neon Signs is uh, off American Infidel slash Sideburns in the Sun. And uh, this is a typed song from 06. Tragic Neurons actually made it onto Sideburns in the Sun also. My girl is a snowflake. Back before I knew what a snowflake was, uh, I was kind of a blue pill type in, in some ways at the time. I still believed in love. Uh, I didn't know, but actually that chick turned out to be a snowflake. She's, she's ridiculous, uh, whatever. It's a great tune, actually. It really is.
That's a really good song. I, I could I could play that live. That's a good one. But uh, my girl girl is a snowflake. It's supposed to be all like what is it, right? My girls are made of snowflakes, so pretty when they freeze. Ha ha ha. What's up, Mr. Blue Pill? It's a great lyric. I don't like the sentiment. It's a gateway world. I like this tune a lot. That's a Ramones inspired piece of music that changes key for every verse. It goes through a cycle of uh, a circle of whatever. Written uh, early 2014 in Arizona. Oh, on the back of Search and Destroy by the Stooges. Which I did learn, but never played. So, yeah, I decided to use the other side of that for... As in, hey, I got a spare blank page, I need the blank side, so... Search and Destroy and It's a Gateway World. Because it's a gateway world, there is no gateway drugs. It's a gateway world. <laughs> Love Relapse, same idea. Uh, I don't know, some directions to Saguaro Man, an Arizona regional burn. Probably a Burning Man wannabe thing, you know. Cool, I guess. I went to Burning Man a couple times in the 90s. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I saw a funny sticker at a, at a show in Reno, and uh, my ex-girlfriend gave me it. She made fun of me. It was, it was, you know, it was funny. It was a uh, sticker over the stage at this place in Reno that said, it's not your dad's Burning Man anymore. And it's like... <laughs> You know, like, your dad's Burning Man. Like, it's some kind of uptight event. You know, it was, I don't know, naked people wrestling with snakes didn't quite seem, uh, you know, exactly um, understated in my book. But, you know, hey, whatever you say. Goodbye to the Good Life. This used to be a top-shelf song. I always liked the lyrics. I outgrew the sentiment. It's a good song. The track is good uh, off of... Uh, Stupid old heart, goodbye to the good life, no real story, that's not even dated. In fact, I think a lot of those lyrics go back to the 90s. You, you're dressing wetly, that's why I want these songs to come out, I, I, don't, I just want to get them out of my face, because the sentiment sometimes sits around for 20 years. You're dressing wet leaves, are peeling from your skin, you take off your clothes like it's your religion. You know, I, that's a good line, right? Gotta use it for something. Sleeping scene number two is kind of oh, written at the uh, Mark Twain Hotel in Hollywood. If it's still the Mark Twain Hotel, God knows. But uh, November of 02. That's a really good song uh, written for Junkie Chick, apparently. I'm not ashamed to show that because that's never come back. It's super ancient. But uh, that's a good song. And uh, the Sleeping Sea trilogy turned into, uh, uh, there's three of them. And uh, Sleeping Sea Number 2, written in November of 02. Uh, Heaven is on its way. Original song off of the gospel record, uh, Everything I Have is Yours, written in Oceano, California, in 08, August of 08. That must have been when we were broken down in the Central Coast area, the Five Cities area. And uh, that's a funny, this is actually a, still a good track. That's still a valid kind of a tune. Uh, yeah, anyway, check it out. The Blonder of Two Evils. Always liked that song. Apparently it took me 11 years to write it. Which just means probably that the music was sitting around for 10 years before I put some words to it. That's probably what that means. But 21, 2001 to 2012, it took me to write that. Uh, I ended up on the Garage Door album. Which, I don't know if that needs to be... Needs to be, uh, this is one that never made it uh, from November of, I'm sorry, December of 06. Yeah, it's a derivative tune. I don't want to talk about that song. The Prisoner, which ends up, which ended up on, uh, on, um, what do you call it, uh, Slow Burning Fun, written in 8, uh, 899, written in August 9. It's the first song I ever wrote in L.A., and I was living in the hostel on Hollywood and Highland while they were building the big shopping mall across the street which with the Kodak Theater, which is where they do the awards, whatever, Academy Awards now, I think. Um, but I wrote this first, uh, this is the first song I ever wrote in L.A., The Prisoner. And it's, uh, it's, got, you could, it's got that old 
look to me. I don't know if that doesn't mean anything. There's the chords, which it's kind of a strange chord progression. I think it's uh, there's it's just one four five in uh, in E, but it starts on B and it's got like nine bars to it or something. It's a little strange, but the lyrics are pretty cool. But that last. Uh, let me think, yeah, yeah, the last line there, the world is finally car sick, it's the second to last line, is from, uh, well, I was sitting there at the hostel looking out the window and all these bicycle people were protesting cars or some, some quaint, cute, ridiculous little thing. You ain't Louise. No, they, and they said the world is car sick, I think, somebody was holding a sign. You ain't Louise. That's another one that's a really good piece of writing, actually. The lyrics are really good. Uh, on this one, uh, you know, I wiped the blood off my chin, I swear it on the Bible and a bottle of gin, I, I didn't do it, and I'll never do it again, who will be the fall guy for my sins, there's no place for extrasensory deprivation in the newly liberated mind. That's a good song uh, off of Vampire Cats, if you want to check it out. Ghost Inside a Ghost, another good song off of Vampire Cats. Uh, Early Austin song. That's too long of a story to tell. Damn it all to hell. Another good one. Early Austin tune. Yeah, another love song about going to hell. <laughs> I guess this is an opportunity to... to uh, I, I say it on stage a lot, but... Uh, when I, when I, when, but a lot of the songs that have kind of an infernal... T t uh, an infernal uh, theme or whatever tint. I, what is, I don't know what the word would be. Um, they're love songs. And I think that any love song that doesn't at least refer, uh, kind of hint at the infernal or the hellish, in de uh, the doomed, the, 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 the damned of th the nature of the feeling is in disingenuous tune. And I point you to Ring of Fire, because that's about, that's like all about it. That's one of the most classic love songs of all time. And that's, I, I fell into a burning ring of fire. That's infernal imagery. It's a, it's a, and, and I didn't know that when I would write these songs. But, it, you know, hey, yo, hey, yo, off to hell we'll probably go. To me, that's a statement of love. That means you're willing to, not willing, but you like can't not. You would, you would, you would go to hell for this person. And, and everything that that means. Uh... And that's, that's understating it, for time's sake. Uh, oh, this must have been recording notes, yeah, from 12-11-08, back when I was recording this in North Hollywood. So I had to fix the drums at these all these points uh, for this tune, because that was, that was a very ramshackle recording made under duress. So at all these time stamps, I had to fix the drums. And, uh, damn it all to hell, off of slow running fun. Death Inside of Life. I like this song. I don't remember the story, though you can kind of guess. It's about love. Death inside of life is, is to me, that's just like a really roundabout way of saying love. I could call the song love, and it would be, that's the infernal again. You know, burning with desire, my heart is on fire. You know, not, not the most you know, original lines, I suppose, on the face of the earth, but it's, it makes the point. And that's why I don't write anymore. Probably because I don't feel any love. I don't believe in love anymore. It's, it's a. I wouldn't go back. I'm not going back. But uh, arguably not a good thing. New Sun, off of uh, this is a really old track, recording wise from 01. I apparently the music the lyrics are from 01, and I always liked this song. I liked the lines in the chorus. Take off your murderous clothes. And uh, it's just an interesting line to me. It's, it's, a, it's about, uh, well, it's actually about uh, the singer of my band in college. And uh, not for any real reason. I was just thinking of her when I wrote that. Take off your murderous clothes, open your mouth, and keep your eyes closed. You talk to people no one else can see, but nothing ever really sets you free. She was a uh, new age type. We all, you know, we, we were uh, hippie, 90s hippies, not hippies, but, you know, we had that kind of, College, long hair, free wheeling kind of musicians, you know, in the 90s thing. And, uh, yeah, she was, 
She was crazy. God help her. God have mercy on her. Nobody beats my baby. Typed out on a piece of uh, notebook paper. And it was my intention to try to write. It's actually not about anything. There are hints of truth in this, but this song is not about anybody really. There's there are there's truth in it. There are people in it, but it's not like about one person. It's one of those songs, kind of a composite fictional song. But it was my attempt to write a song that was beautiful until the very, very last word. And I actually, obviously, tried to take that out. I canceled it out. Nobody beats my baby but me. And uh, that's my idea of kind of funny. To make this, take this beautiful song and turn it into this highly offensive, horrible thing at the, at the, on the last note. <laughs> and to see if you can do it. And I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. you got to have a yeah, yeah, yeah song. Uh, written actually in early 02 between San Francisco and L.A. Back when I would take that Greyhound trip. Uh, I remember uh, I made out with some chick on the steps of the Greyhound in San Francisco and tried to get her to come back to Hollywood with me to crash with my buddy's friend, me at my buddy's place, <laughs> where she would have been welcome. And, and she saw, she looked at, she, she, <laughs> she decided against it. Thank God. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. Promised Land. This is an old song. Yeah, I remember writing this back in the dope days, Virgil Street, when I lived on Virgil and Melrose in L.A. in February of '03. I had an apartment at the time, but I was still a junkie, and I had this dopey, this dip, dippy roommate, this freaking guy, yuppie type. He was kind of a hipster type of guy who would talk bad about drugs and then get drunk and then want you to shoot them up or get or at least do the tinfoil thing with the with the dope and uh, I kind of he was a that was a long story we ended up uh, he got me evicted from there and maced me when I sh showed up to get my stuff and he was like you're evicted man and I actually kind of like attacked him a little bit and he saw it coming and maced me and my friend you know, we ran out of there with this chick I used to know, and she got she took me to the St. Moritz, and I checked in, and another one of those stories. This was written there, uh, and I remember he we were all loaded on coke one night, and this I was really in a really good mood, sparkling mood, and wanted to. I think I wanted to write, I, or wanted to walk around. I forget, and then he wanted to do the opposite and wouldn't leave me alone. Whatever it was that I wanted to do. He, was, he wanted to do something else, and it was kind of a waste of the high. High Orbit. I want to get going. I want to roll through this. No, no, On Bended Knee. Yeah. That's a song that, uh, off of uh, Your Arms Inside Me, I think. Yeah. State Highway 395. Wow. This song never got recorded. 1999. Uh, written about State Highway 395. It's not actually about any of that. Uh, I think it's on a uh, on a uh, video of me playing at the Stork Club in 02. Is that the only version of that song that exists? Um, back when that was a big song for me. Um, yeah, old. As like I said, this side is not as big. This is a lot of more. It's probably more interesting in a lot of ways. I am a heart. Uh, whatever, on a little tiny piece of paper to kind of represent the tiny little song that it is. It's a good song. Off a Broken Bird. Room 661. Written in 1998. This song, I think, ended up on Angels on Fire. The first, uh... First, uh... The first record ever. Yeah, that was 19 years ago. It's coming up, that'll be 20 years ago in March, so, yeah, it's 20 years ago. And, uh, yeah, Room 661, uh, you can read into that about a uh, hotel in Milwaukee. Off to the races. Um, this is a really uh, interesting song written in 09, uh, off Broken Bird. Anyway, that's the lyric sheet you can see. So, uh, there, there. Yeah, check it out. That's a good song, actually. Off of Broken Bird. I think it's on volume two of the Greatest Hits albums, too. Time is a Floating Menace. 
uh, self-explanatory, handwritten. I wrote this, if I'm not mistaken. Gosh, is the lyric that short? Well, it's partially written about uh, these, the, uh, the place I would go camping near Tucson. I would actually go up there every couple of weeks and rent a campsite for the night or a couple days if possible and then use the campground's shower and kind of use that as like a base to get out of Tucson for a couple of days at a time and get cleaned up instead of can't really get cleaned up in town when you're in you know and you can go to the park in the morning and stuff and get cleaned up there but you know it's not the same though it actually is a pretty good park Tucson I want to say Ross Park is where I used to go on a regular basis there I forget Free at Last written off of 89B in Arizona, I wrote this uh, beginning of 2014 at the, in the Verde Valley. This was kind of the end of the, uh, the the Your Arms Inside Me writing kick, and uh, it's a great end to that record. And you can listen to it if you want more info. Yo Te Amo Till You Die is a funny song that finally did end up on the uh, Wild Irish Rose album only five years after it was written, so that's not too bad. It's from 08. Yo te amo, till you die. Idiots for love. Baby, turn off your shields. We'll run like idiots through the fields. Another funny, stupid song that ended up. It's actually on the Stray Songs record on, on uh, YouTube. That's, uh, Stray Songs are all the B-list um, bonus tracks from all the records. They got kind of lost and weren't good enough for whatever. just didn't fit on any of the records. So I put them on the... Uh, on a compilation of B-list song. Dope is a Thing with Feathers, uh, which is a uh, Emily Dickinson lyric, almost. And uh, Dope is a Thing with Feathers, baby, that perches on the soul, that turns your dreams all into nightmares and all your diamonds into coal. And so this is all the places where the... Uh, it's not really obvious. In the, in the, it, it's written for this. I think it's in B-flat. I know that. I mean, I'm guessing that because it's written there. I'm kind of guessing. <laughs> it's this descending thing. 1, 4, 5 and B, and B flat minor. And so this is kind of shows you where it goes up to the 4, you know, on every stanza so that I knew where to change chords while I was uh, recording the track because I had never played it without singing it, of course. And so recording, you don't really want to do that. But you probably are familiar with that song since that's off of... Uh, the first volume of the Greatest Hits album, which is uh, the most popular Greatest Hits album that most people have heard. Uh, High Orbit, that's a good one. Actually, nothing. Beginning of 2013. Uh, no real story behind it. It's just a cool song. Untitled Lovers, written, I want to say, in 08. Yeah, 08 to 2012. Um, my friend in England put some poetry, original, her poetry, behind it uh, for the recording, which ended up on uh, on the Stupid Old Heart record, put on the back of the flyer for the Airstream, when we were trying to sell the Airstream in the Pismo Beach area in 2008. and took a huge loss on that, just to get rid of it. We learned that the hard way. It's only worth what somebody will pay for it. <laughs> Sad, unfortunate fact of the fallen world. You want to legislate uh, equality for all these six figure socialists who let their musicians host the open mic and live in the parking lot. It's possible I don't want to hear your political religious views until you write me a check for 80 grand uh, and, and, and move in, or move into the parking lot with me. Permanent hearts. Yeah. Oh, just some, uh, I don't know what that all is. That's a good song. Um, written in 07. Um, probably a love song. The original version of I'm So Beautiful, uh, which was, I always hated the title Good Evening Netherworld. It's a terrible, terrible title. In fact, none of these lyrics are used, except for uh, a couple of, uh, I have committed the most violent acts of appreciation. None of these have been used. None of these. This is from 93 to 96, it says. <laughs> I 
and none of it's been used. But the music was used for I'm So... It finally ended up being used on I'm So Beautiful, which is from uh, 2013. So it, that song took 20 years, 17 to 20 years to get realized. And most of it got thrown out in the process. Top of the world! Early 06, I wrote this about a chick that didn't know it was about her. Uh, we were never girlfriend, boyfriend, or anything like that. We were friendly. I think we shared a couple of shows. You've never heard of her. I've never talked about her. I've never named her. I never will. I don't even remember her name at this point. Though I, if I thought of it, I could. And she was beautiful. And I just, she was an, uh, a muse. She was just a muse. And I wrote a song for her uh, without telling her it was for her. I, never, I never told her I wrote a song for her. And, you know, it was just, we were never going to cross paths. We never really did. Top of the world, though. It's a good song. LOL, All the Way to Hell. Written uh, January 11, 2014 in Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument in southern Arizona. Kind of a way of uh, telling the, the laughing hyena contingent to go. They can take their laughter to hell with them if it pleases them to do so. Neon Signs. This is uh, an old song. For, well, it's not that old. I mean, relatively speaking, June to November of 06, it got recorded in early 07. It's on, the, it's on uh, Volume 1. But uh, sitting at the counter of the 24-hour diner under a pink neon sign. That's about uh, a place I went out of business about 10 years ago in Tucson. I, would, uh, I played a show there, a couple of shows there, uh, actually, over the years. Uh, a cool buyer, I forget the name of the place. But they had a, a, a gig room called the Red Room. It was the Grill, I think. It was called the Grill. A well-known place. Any Tucson person would know it. And it was in business for, like, I don't remember. But it went out of business, I think, in 2011. And uh, I got so drunk there, they gave, they gave me unlimited beer, unlimited alcohol. Like, they told me I could drink as long as I wanted. And that's a bad, bad idea. And I, got, I actually ordered two meals there. I got so drunk, I went back and ordered breakfast again. And they were like, the girl was like, uh, and the one guy was like, just do it. He's off his rocker. He, I wasn't like aggressive. I was just, just stinking stupid drunk, just pathetic drunk. And uh, I'd like to compliment, uh, flatter myself by saying last time I went there was in 09, and they had a thing on their, on their menu saying, if you're too drunk, we're only going to, and they were kind of like their menu was even telling you. Like, like I th and I want to say that was kind of because of me. Uh, perhaps not solely because of me, but certainly I added to it. I, but because I, it was dumb. I mean, I was I was out of my out of my head. Well, you know, you used to be able to walk onto the railroad tracks in downtown Tucson. They have fences around them now, and you could just go sit there and drink on the tr train tracks and get out of the ways when the get out of the way when the trains went by, and, and I'd sit there with a six pack and drink the six pack on the train tracks and thumbs up the conductors who sometimes ignored you and sometimes they didn't. <laughs> That's the last thing they want to see. Of course, I could care less about you, of course. But I was in a Kerouac mood, you know. And sometimes they were cool. Not eh, whatever. And uh, but it was cool, you know, drinking in the desert by the railroad tracks in the middle of Tucson, right in the middle of town, downtown. Anyway, neon signs. These days, love song off of uh, Vampire Cats. Not the. Jackson Brown, Nico tune. I didn't know that that uh, title had been used. I tend not to use titles once that I know that they've been used, and that's like even Blackbird. I, at the time, I wrote that in 1994, and I hadn't heard the Beatles song yet, so it's kind of a lucky, lucky. Bad Americans. This is a good. This is a surprisingly good little piece of writing off of uh, off of uh, the Blinded by Faggots record. I think <laughs> that's a funny title. But that's on uh, one of the greatest hits records. I, I recommend you check that one out. Drive Your Brain Into the Sea. That's a good one. No story. Written over seven years from 2000 to 2007. Truck Stop. Old. 1999. It finally ended up on Garage Door in 2012. Uh, this was a song that I always wanted to give. The recording is good. And this was always, always kind of a top shelf song that never really got played. Is off. It's hard to find a band that could pull it off. And when I say pull it off, I mean just vibe right with it. You know, uh, it, there were other songs that worked better quicker, and it was 
It got played, but not as much as I would have liked it to. Are you happy, Mr. Superman? Uh, inspired by an Ayn Rand, I want to say, out of the Fountainhead. And that guy, uh, that Howard Rourke character. And uh, the line is straight from, from there, I believe. Are you happy, Mr. Superman? From 03. Uh, the title isn't taken from uh, Ayn Rand. Negative Image. Um, that's a good one. Uh, off of uh, Blinded by Faggots slash, uh, I don't know, one of the later Greatest Hits rock records. Don't Say Please. Um, there it is, you know. Uh, it's time that I'm on my way. It's the end of the summer, and I'm number than a number. <laughs> I'm number than a number. It's the same word. I always thought that was kind of funny. That's a good song. Uh, off of blind or off of uh, slow burning fun. I want to burn everybody down. Yeah, not true. <laughs> if you, uh, but if you've ever been there, you know what it feels like. And it's one of those furious songs. It, it didn't even end up on anything. It ended up on the Breakfast at Cuneo's Drive-In drive collections, which I'm gonna, might have to put up on YouTube just to kind of save them from obscurity because they they were never meant to be paid for anyway. So that's really no loss. Maybe I will do that, actually. This is old. Alone. From July of 99. This would have, this would have been written... Uh, I wrote this. I remember I was inspired. This is, in fact, a set list from those days back in my... This is my old drummer's handwriting, as a matter of fact. Uh, Lord Chango, Blue Skies, St. Joe, etc. <laughs> Carburetor Kid, The Black Dahlia... The Black Dahlia? Was that song? When did I write The Black Dahlia? I didn't get to L.A. until late. That was right before I got to L.A. Well, maybe this this might this actually might be old. The the, the you can tell that the paper is very old. It's been sitting in a folder for twenty years. It's about to fall apart. It's covered in mold stains. The set list is probably after the actual song. Anyway, Alone is also off of Breakfast at Cuneo's Drive In. Uh, it's um, it was written about uh, getting drunk in a bar on Christmas Eve in Milwaukee. I used to have a Milwaukee. I used to have uh, I spent some time in Milwaukee. I never lived there, really. I spent a month there at, at once, once. But I went there a lot for a couple years in the late '90s, and uh, this was about that. That one is not mine, and I didn't write it. And so I'm not going to bother. We're running out of batteries here, as I was afraid we would be. Stalin in a cowboy hat. Yeah, we're going to run out of space, man. Gosh, dang it. Stalin in a cowboy hat. Written, uh, apparently I was trying to sell uh, all the diamonds you can eat at record stores in Austin, presumably, since this is where this was written. So... Stalin in a cowboy hat. Somewhat self-explanatory. Valet Girl, the second song I ever wrote in L.A. Two years after I wrote the first one, I went back to Chicago because I got my ass kicked in L.A. That's a long story. I don't have the battery power for it. I ended up uh, homeless in the hospital, uh, OD'd on some serious drugs, collapsed in the street. Tried to break into somebody's house, but I wasn't trying to break into their house. I thought I was home. And uh, I was trying to get in their door, and they called the cops on me, and the cops got there. I was collapsed in the street, so they called the paramedics, and the paramedics revived me in the, in the middle of a, like a giant acid trip, and it was pretty horrific, actually. I went back to Chicago after that, because I had to live on the street for a while in, uh, in L.A., and that was rough, and I just went back to Chicago. My girlfriend at the time was smart enough to convince me to buy a round-trip ticket from back to Chicago. I told her I wouldn't need it. She convinced me to buy it anyway. She was right. I needed it. I went back in 01 and wrote this song, which I thought was a funny uh, play on the valley girl word. Valet girl, or the bottom of an unknown place uh, is called. And that's actually off of Stray Songs. I, I always liked this song. This was written in you know, some flea by a hotel in 01 in Hollywood. And, uh, but the recording waited a long time, and then it became uh, this... Uh, uh, then the recording didn't fit the record. I, I, it's a good recording, actually. Lord Chango slash One More Night. 
This was an old Chicago tune, and you can tell from the age of the lyric sheet how old it is. Uh, it's off of uh, no story, really. I could probably tell stories, but uh, the song itself is not a story, really. Hearts in Sync, S-I-N-K, <laughs> not S-Y-N-C-H, off of Garage Door. Virgin and Tonic. From 1997, that song waited for a while. Uh, it's the first song off of Holy Smokes, I believe. So that song waited for, for uh, I wrote the lyrics in, uh, well, 1997, obviously. But the music was sitting around for, for uh, more than 15 years before it actually got realized. And it ended up becoming kind of a disco song for the people that live on the moon. Bottle of Blood from October of 2000. Uh, waited for 12 years to get recorded. Uh, that's actually kind of an interesting song lyrically, and I took a piece of those lyrics uh, uh, to a Nick Cave show in Seattle in 1998 and put them in his pocket under this re his really stupid poem called "Hey, What's Up, Dead Man" or something stupid like that. And I ended up in the front row of this Nick Cave show in Seattle in 1998, and um, and I and I was drunk all the time back then. The story goes on for a while. I could talk about that too. How can I be this happy when I feel so sad? Another Hooray I'm Free from Fallen in Love song from Oregon Pike Cactus National Monument in early 2014. Licking the Fist That Feeds. Uh, well, that's another one that got kind of lost. It's on, uh, on Slow Burning Fun 2 uh, from 08. I recommend you check that one out. It's on YouTube somewhere. Uh, but this song, the title is really good, right? Licking the Fist of Feeds. Happiness is Submission to God. I remember writing this in Boston when my buddy Bill and his brother went out for drinks. Uh, they went out to go drinking, and I wasn't drinking at the time, but it, they were cool to hang out with. And uh, We were staying at Bill's uh, brother's place in Watertown, actually. I wrote this in Watertown in September of 06 and August of 06 in Brooklyn, apparently. That's what it says. And, uh, I, and I, they wanted to, you want to go out, man? And I'm like, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I, uh, um, well, the battery's about to die here, so if I can get through this story, I'll stop, uh, and then maybe we can do another video and finish the folder off another time. But, uh, I said, yeah, man, um, no, I don't want to go out. I'm going to write. I'm finished writing this song. I was in the middle of writing this song. There's some good lyrics in this tune, actually. So, Happiness is Submission to God. I think it did finally end up on one of the greatest hits records, one of the newer ones. Uh, but it's off of American Infidel. And it's just a good good piece of writing. I was really, really into that. I, didn't, I couldn't stop writing it. I had to write it. Uh, there was no way I wasn't going to write it. The original Blackbird, I mean, it's a printout of Blackbird. Um, the, the lyrics for Blackbird. Uh, it's, a, it's a duet uh, written from 1994 to 2007, it says. So, so uh, we'll pick up... Uh, yeah, anyway, that's another story, too. 1994, I remember writing this song. In fact, the version that ended up on Rural Mortis, the lyrics were revamped in 07. The only thing that's left over from 1994 is the music and the, the lyrics and the chorus. Everything else was written in 07, and it was intended to be a duet between uh, an argument in song between a, a fighting couple, right? And which is what it obviously is, and it's uh, really kind of funny. But uh, it started in '94, and it had a more interesting chord change. It's just kind of one four five. It's good. I, if you know, if you've heard it, I, I'm not ashamed of it. But it was something about it was more interesting, and I forgot that that little ingredient, whatever it was, that made it special and totally unique. But somewhere in, in the 20 years from writing it to recording it. And uh, it waited, uh, waited 20 years, actually. So, okay, we will pick it up. Uh, before this battery dies, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it off and recharge the camera. And we'll pick up uh, the song Tour Folder Part 3 next time.